All right, we do. Hello, everybody. Welcome to First Friday's Wellness Cafe with myself, Maria, and trainer Lauren, who is a registered dietitian. I'm a personal trainer and nutrition coach, and I think this is our eighth or maybe ninth uh, one of the season. So thank you guys so much for supporting us. Uh, we love putting these together and sharing information with you about um, all things wellness. Each month we try to bring something new and different. And sometimes we repeat some of this uh, core concepts that, to help out, um, help out this team because you know the workouts are only part of the equation of the wellness wheel. There's seven other parts to it because now it has eight. We'll tell you about the eighth one next week. I think we're announcing that, but <laughs> either way, welcome to the eating arch. So show of hands, did anybody take the nutrition session that Christine, Lauren, and myself hosted earlier this year? Um, I can't see. Brandon. All right. I don't know if I see any other hands. So uh, Christine was there because she hosted it with us. Christine, raise your hand. <laughs> so the eating arch, this is a concept the three of us uh, came up with together. Christine is a health coach with the Cleveland Clinic and has a lot of experience helping patients, you know, to fine tune their nutrition and, you know, just help be a resource for people. So the three of us came together, created this concept, and we wanted to share it today with all of you. So Let's get to it. So what is the eating arch? Good question. This is our concept and idea was that when you're eating, there's a pattern to it. First, you got to plan your food. You need to get the food in your house. You need to eat the food, digest the food and, you know, circle of life. It continues, right? So if you think about it as a process and you have each phase dialed in, you're gonna eat better, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna feel your body and get more, not just out of your workouts, but out of your day-to-day. -day. You won't have those energy slumps, you won't be sitting there trying to make your favorite dish and realize you're out of cinnamon because you'll be, your, your system will be in place. I know Rochelle likes to talk a lot about systems and processes. It's like daily habits, it's a habit, it's something that you stick to, something you do, and when you follow this approach, as closely as you can, you know, every week's going to look a little different. We found that, that this system works for us, and that's why we wanted to share it with all of you. So questions that we will address. Is your kitchen organized? Do you feel confident you know what, what's in your food and how to fuel your body? Do you have a, a good sense of what you need to be eating? Are you meal planning? Are you finding that you're throwing out food in your fridge every week, wasted food that got moldy down in the drawer that you forgot you ever had? And how are you eating? Are you sitting down, eating slowly, chewing ever, the right number of times? <laughs> it's 32, by the way. Um, <laughs> or are you just watching TV and checking email and like shoveling the move, food down your mouth? Like your lunch could go from like a five minute gorge fast, right? Or it can be an enjoyable 30 minutes where you sit, you chew, you savor your food, you look at your food. So those are some questions to consider. And I will go over the first uh, part of the process, which is low hanging fruit. So that is an expression made popular. And it literally means you grab the low hanging fruit first. It's the easiest to get to. So the easiest thing to start is in your kitchen, right? what do you have? Do you know what's in your kitchen? So we're giving you homework already and we're going to check in with you because we have all your email addresses. <laughs> we're watching you. I'm watching you. Lauren's watching you. Christine is watching you. So by Sunday of this week, no excuses. And you got to swear, pinky promise, to go through your fridge and read the expiration date on every food item in there. It's not going to take you long. It might take you 10 minutes. Just read the expiration date. You might be surprised. Some things could have been expired last week, last month, two years ago. Read through everything. If there's anything in your fridge that is expired, do yourself a favor, throw it out. If it's compostable and you have a compost pile and that makes you feel good, do that. But get rid of it. It's just taking precious space in your fridge and it's not serving you at all. And once you've done that in your fridge, 
Oh, don't forget your freezer. Just because it's frozen, it does not mean it's gonna last forever. So go through your freezer too. And if there's some ganky thing in a Ziploc bag and you have no idea what it was, just throw it out. You, you need that space for food that you're gonna eat. You're not trying to preserve, it's not a museum, it's an active space for health, right? Once you've done your fridge, we encourage you for your homework, if you're up for the challenge to go up to your pantry. So any other place in your house where you have food, your spice cabinet, where you, you know, your every cabinet that you have, same idea, just go through. And the easiest thing, the first step is just get rid of what's expired. Or if you happen to see something you know you're never gonna use again in your whole life, put it aside. You can re-gift it to somebody if it's unopened. <laughs> There's always options, right? So that's homework for you to do. If you choose to accept the challenge, throw it down in the chat that you choose to accept the challenge and I'll extra double check on you. <laughs> and then the next challenge is by next week. So we're giving you next week to do this, reorganize your fridge and your pantry in a way that makes sense. So, you know, all your spices are together. All your flowers are together. All your nuts are together. You know, all the fruits are in the fruit drawer and it's at the right humidity level compared to, you know, many fridges have the high and low humidity. That's there for a reason. If you've never looked it up, look it up. Make sure things are in the right spot. Make sure your containers are placed in a way that you know what's in your food. So that is the second challenge. So if you're up for these two challenges, I want you to put your name down and say, yes, I'm up for it in the chat. Everyone's going to get an email, but the people that commit double commit, I'm going to hound you just a little bit more. <laughs> and this is the first part of uh, the eating arch. Especially with spices, you'd be surprised how old some of the spices are in your fridge. And or if you have some, I have some in my fridge and some in my pantry. It could be three years old and you're still using it. It's not good. All right, next slide, my last slide. Ingredient detectives. All right, so some of the benefits of going through that first phase is that you're gonna have a lot more space in your kitchen drawers, cabinets, shelves, pantry, lazy Susans, all the, thing, all the places you store your food. You're gonna have more space. You're gonna be able to see all the food that's available to you because you organized it and you know, have the labels for it. You don't need to get super OCD about it. I kind of am about the labels. I like them all face. Lauren is too, I can tell she's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you can't see it, you're not going to know what's there, right? So if you get rid of the stuff, if you reorganize it, you're going to be able to see all the food available to you. And you're going to be able to find what you're looking for too. You're not going to spend 20 minutes trying to find the garlic cloves because you're going to know exactly where they are. And then last step. So I guess it's three challenges. I'm, I'm laying, laying down, laying down the gauntlet. Boom. Is go back into the fridge go back into your pantry and read the ingredient labels. Have you ever done that? Do you know what you're eating? Can you pronounce all those things? There's a good chance there are some extra ingredients in some of the things you have that are totally unnecessary, really unhealthy for you, cause inflammation, cause bloating, cause all sorts of terrible things, cause stomach upset, and a lot of it's preservatives. And there's, um, so that's the next third, so three, three pronged approach <laughs> on my part here. Read those. If you don't know what it is, Google it or ask us. You can reach out to us. We'll be a resource for you. Um, if you can't pronounce it, you know, you probably don't need to be eating it, right? <laughs> Unless it's like another language. <laughs> there's likely a better option for you to level up. So I'm not proposing uh, you go from eating Wonder Bread to making your own sourdough bread at home. It's steps, but baby steps will help you improve the quality of the ingredients and the food in your home, which is going to make you feel better. And that is the first phase of our eating arch. And I see chats coming through. I'm going to read them because I know um, a lot of people do the listen to the recording, so I don't want to miss them, miss it out. So Terry says I'm in. Tracy says she's in. Toby says, I, li I literally just did this, but I can double check. Lauren says she's going to go through her baking goods. Oh, hold on. There's more. This is good. Kristen, Kristen, Kristen's working with me already. I will double check mine, but I'm pretty sure mine is pretty organized. Mary New Newton says, I've actually been doing this recently. It's amazing what you find. And that emoji that's like this. Mm. <laughs> Allie's in. Blair says, been thinking about doing this a lot, ladies, so I commit. Lauren says, yay, everybody. 
And to start small, if this is overwhelming, like condiments or something that seems easiest. Oh yeah, so you could say, you know, Monday I'm gonna do the, the doors and then like Tuesday, you know, yeah, you can definitely break it down. There's a lot of uh, emotion sometimes tied with food and the thought of throwing things out and it being money can be a lot. So take it on whatever level works for you. Um, Mary's asking, what are some ingredients that you might be talking specifically about? I will follow up with that um, with a blog post. So I used to run a few nutrition groups um, through VFIT that I have some lists of things that I would work to avoid. But my biggest one I'll say now is high fructose corn syrup. It only belongs in candy. It doesn't belong anywhere else. <laughs> but there's lots of other ones, but I don't want to make anyone neurotic. But Daniela says, yes, I need this push. I need to do a clean out. Uh, yeah. Oh, there, there you go. Yeah. High fructose corn syrup, um, high hydrogenated oils, carrageenan and others. And uh, yeah, there is a few others like some oils, like some flour oil can be inflammatory. Soy can be inflammatory to some people. So um, that's the challenge. And that is the beginning of the, the eating arch. So I believe Lauren is next. I'm going to write down everyone's names who just made comments. We'll keep on keeping on here. Here we go, Lauren, take the floor. All right, here we go. So I think, so when we first did this arch, um, it was Maria, Christine, and myself, and we kind of split the five days up. So I just realized we don't have kind of like the middle slide, which is okay. Um, <laughs> but it was just because it'll feel like we kind of might step skipped a step, but that was the meal planning portion. Um, and that can be something that maybe we address at our next meeting, um, or we can add in when we email this out. But um, Maria did a really good job of setting yourself up for success, right? By cleaning out the pantry, looking at your ingredients. Um, and then the middle portion would be making those grocery lists and then getting that meal plan written out so that you have the food available that you want to be eating. Um, and it was really cool because in the nutrition group, and this isn't something I'm, I'm great at. Um, I kind of just eat the same thing. So we kind of always have the same stuff. I feel like I've gotten kind of used to knowing what I'm going to need for the week. Um, but some people shared some really good app ideas that they had, um, that will help you with like grocery lists, or you put in a recipe and it spits out the ingredients for you. Some really helpful tools there. Um, and so I know meal planning, especially when life is really busy, like right now um, with Christmas coming and everything that may kind of get pushed to the side and you just want to grab and eat whatever's at home, like frozen pizza or things that may not make you feel your best. Um, so even if you just start by planning a couple meals per week that can provide leftovers, um, that can be really helpful just to set yourself up so that you have, you know, you have good food to eat at home and you're not scrounging every night of like, what, what am I going to feed myself? What am I going to feed my family? Um, cause that can be stressful. And then we eat things we don't want to, and we don't feel our best. And I know that firsthand because I've been there. I know we've all been there. Right. Um, so anyways, I encourage you through even this holiday season, just to provide yourself with foods that will help you feel good and keep you healthy and energized. Um, and so I know that portion was a little bit more brief. Um, but the, my part of the arch, you know, if it's that arch, we're kind of on steps four and five. Um, my portion is after you've really set yourself up well is to tune into how you eat. And Maria covered this briefly in the beginning. Um, oh, good Fran. I'll address that at the end. Um, and this is just, it, this is um, addressing with mindful eating. And I know I talk about this a lot, but I truly believe it's so, so important because the way we eat, um, really affects how we feel and how much we eat. And like Maria said, um, especially when we're busy if we're, or if we're very distracted, we're not paying attention to what we're doing. We can consume more food than we were planning on and then not feel great afterwards. So, um, one of the things that you really want to be able to do here is, um, commit to three things. If you want to start with mindful eating, um, so really sitting down to eat your meals. So, right. Not standing up at the counter, not sitting in your car, you know, just find a place where you can sit down and it's comfortable and you can focus. That can be anywhere that you would like to eat approaching mealtime when you're moderately hungry. So really, really trying not to skip meals or waiting too long in between meals where you get so hungry and ravenous that then you overeat. Okay. I do this to myself and I don't like doing it. So I can be the first to admit that, you know, I waited way too long the other day and then you're 
grabbing this and you're grabbing that, even if you had a really good intentions of eating a good meal that day. Um, and then that can really cause like stomach discomfort. It can cause bloating. Maybe you get overly full. So moderately hungry. And yes, number three, Toby, I agree with this one, putting away distractions such as the TV, the phone, computer, or books. Let's just like chime it like anyone. Yes, I definitely do this as well. And I try not to, um, cause I think, oh, it's fine. I'm still paying attention to my meal, <laughs> but I don't think we always are. So, um, whenever I work with people and this is a really difficult thing for them to do, I always just stay either start with one meal or start with like five minutes. You can just start with a few minutes and see what it feels like. Maybe a few minutes at the beginning of the meal. And then a few minutes at the end of the meal. Um, and just kind of check in with yourself where your hunger's at your fullness. Are you even tasting your food? Right. Sometimes we just eat it and we're not really even enjoying what we're eating. So, um, and something I want to address too, we're covering a lot today in this arch. Um, if something stands out to you, we could always do a full cafe on like one of the items. Um, or maybe you just pick one of the sections that stands out to you the most. Like maybe you're good at mindful eating. Maybe you're already good at cleaning out your closet, your, not your closet, <laughs> your pantry. Maybe you're good at your closet too, uh, but you've already cleaned out your pantry or your ingredients. So just pick one of the sections that stands out to you the most and you can even um, start there, right? Also closets should be probably cleaned out too. Mine does. <laughs> All right, Maria, next one, please. All right, so Maria gave you a good activity to commit to... Um, cleaning out your pantry, your, um, I can't, oh my God, you guys cabinets. That's what I'm trying to say, or your refrigerator. Um, and my activity might, for my challenge for you would be to sit, as you sit down to eat, recognize what you enjoy about what you're eating. So don't re, don't have any judgment around it. Like, oh, I shouldn't be eating this. Oh, this is fattening. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about what, what is it that you like about the food that you chose for that meal? So what are the different qualities? Um, do you like how it looks? Is it really colorful? Do you like that it's warm? Do you like that it's a cold food? Is it crunchy, savory, tasty? Does it make you feel happy? What are the different aromas that you smell, right? Because we use all of those senses with our food. It's not just, not, not just the taste. Um, so I would really challenge you to try this with a meal, maybe today since it's fresh on your mind or coming up. Um, but just take the time to notice the flavors and the qualities that make it appealing. Do you actually enjoy the food or are you just eating it because it's available, right? Sometimes we do that. We're just hungry and it's there. So we eat it. Um, and is it actually going to satisfy you? Like, is it truly what you want? Um, or are you going to end up eating it and then feeling like, okay, that was okay, but it's not what I wanted. I'm going to go search for something else. Like, I know we've all been there, right? Like maybe you're technically full, your stomach's okay, but you're not satisfied um, with the food that you ate. All right, next slide, Maria, we're almost done. All right, and this is the last um, part of our eating arch. So um, let's say we've tackled mindful eating, uh, but how do you regain the pleasure in eating, right? Sometimes there's guilt tied to the foods that we eat. Um, and really, this is supposed to be an enjoyable experience. We're meant to enjoy food. It's fuel, right? So it's fuel for our bodies. We can't function without it. Um, we need the nutrition to be in our best health. Um, but sometimes also food is about connection and celebrating. Like think about birthday parties or Christmas or holidays. Like it's around food and that should be a time that you enjoy it um, and you don't have any guilt tied to it, which often happens, let's say between like, Halloween and the new year, people are just like, oh my gosh, like all the meals, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, especially if you're putting some of those other plans into place that we talked about, like if you're eating good food, you're being mindful while you eat it, you've planned ahead. And now you're just taking the time to eat and celebrate with others. Um, it can be a really enjoyable experience without the guilt. So this kind of ties into mindful eating, but just to kind of break it down easily. And I know this is a lot of information again. So, um, just asking yourself, what do I really want to eat? So I've, I've talked about this before, like finding a good food match. So foods that you enjoy, but they also hit the spot, right? So you're going to feel satisfied all around. And if you're not satisfied, you're probably not going to be happy. Give yourself unconditional permission to eat without judgment. Um, and that's not saying like, Hey, I can just eat whatever I want, however much I want, whenever I want. Okay. You're probably not going to 
feel your best, but just pulling that judgment away before you approach a meal time. Um, Because if you're focusing on what you should or shouldn't be eating, it really takes the fun out of the experience, right? You're left like either feeling guilty while you eat or afterwards, and that's just really not fun. (laughs) So just focus on the present moment. Go back to that activity that we talked about. Why am I enjoying this food? Like, say you just pick, you love dessert and you picked this brownie with some ice cream. What do I enjoy? It's, it's got warm and cold. It's kind of chewy. Um, you know, I love the taste of the chocolate. Um, and then when you're really paying attention, hopefully you'll feel more satisfied and in the moment. And when you feel you get to that point of like, okay, I'm satisfied right here. Maybe you can push the food away if you're done, or you continue to eat it if you're not, if you're not quite finished. And then lastly, eat in a relaxing and enjoyable environment. So um, again, prepare a meal when you're moderately hungry, maybe take it outside, sit at the table to eat. And again, just notice it. What do you see, smell, and taste? And I know we've talked about this a lot because many of us had admitted to doing this. Oops, sorry, Maria, one more time. Back. (laughs) Yeah, the previous side. It's okay, we'll leave it. Okay, so the difference between eating your kids' leftovers, right, or your spouse's leftovers or whatever sitting out and then actually taking time to eat the meal that you prepared. <laughs> I'm so right. close to being good at the MacBook Pro, but it's okay. We'll get I have there a hard you guys. time sometimes. All right. You want All me right. to go back to it? No, it's fine. We're good. We're good. All we right. So it. we're mm-hmm. on the four S's. Mm-hmm. All right, we're I'm back. Just, thank you. <laughs> It's all good. We have tech difficulties. It's all good. Um, Okay. And this would be the last one. So an easy way to remember the four S's sit down, eat slowly, eat sensually and savor every bite. So that can be kind of a good way to remind yourself the four S's. Um, And we get to eat, we have to eat, we get to eat multiple times a day, every day. So it's really important that we do enjoy our food. Um, And that we also pay attention to those ingredients that we're eating and how we're eating, right? Because it really does affect our health. Um, Okay. And if anybody would like to share, when we did this in our group, we had people share their feelings around food, um, maybe something you want to try or how you might approach it differently. So if that's something you want to chime in with, we do have about seven to eight minutes left. And so we'll just kind of open up the floor to you. Thanks for listening to me ramble. (laughs) Lauren, I have a question. Oh, goodness. Yes. Um, I, I don't want to misspeak, but um, do you recall how long it takes your stomach to register that it's full? Is it like 30 minutes or something? Do you remember? I usually say about like 20 minutes. Right. So that's the issue with when you house the food, your stomach doesn't know it's full yet. That's why if you sit down and you eat slowly in real time, you'll feel the fullness and you won't overeat. Right. Okay. And something I also like to do, cause I'll find myself doing it is like, even just stopping and saying like, I'm not even sure if I feel quite full yet, but I know it's going to take a little while. So I'll come back to it and see, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to, maybe you don't have 30 minutes to eat a meal. Like let's be real 30 minutes, three times a day. Okay. Maybe not. So even if you have to kind of eat quickly and you're not really sure if you're full, I would just pause and wait. And most of the time I'd say like nine times out of 10, I'm like, oh, I am full. I am satisfied. Okay. I'm glad I didn't like continue on and then make myself feel uncomfortable. So that's something else that you can do too. And remember the food's always there. So if you want more, you can have it. It's just waiting to see if you really need it. Oh, good question. question from Tina. How do we tackle that, that when we're prone to stress eating, very good question. And I see a lot of heads nodding. Uh huh. (laughs) (laughs) So my, I would, I would probably Tina probably try to find something else that you can do instead of, um, instead of eating, because it's not really going to solve your problem. And I know that's not maybe easy in the moment, but Um, maybe coming up with some other things that you can do. Like if you know you're stressed, I'm assuming you're eating when you're not hungry. That's me assuming you're not hungry. Okay. So let's say you're not actually physically hungry, but food is your go-to come up with some other ideas 
that you can do, like, instead, I'm going to go just like step outside, right? You just change your situation. Um, maybe you just need to talk to someone, maybe, you know, find other activities that help you in those times. Um, because we know that eating, it's a very temporary fix and it's not really going to solve your stress long-term. Um, but if you are actually feeling hungry, that's a little bit more difficult, right? Um, because then you actually need to eat and you might find yourself overeating. So that's when I would try to be more mindful or take your food outside or sit down or do something, um, away from whatever situation it was that made you stress. Maybe it was work. Just try to remove yourself first, give yourself a few minutes and then approach your meal time. But that is a really good one. Christine, do you have anything you want to add as I put you on the spot? If not, that's okay. But I know that your part was really good yes. when we did our thing. If not, that's okay. We can add it to the email. I just typed something <laughs> in response to um, Tina's question. It was just like a check-in that I use um, pretty regularly, like to pause before when you're stressed. It goes along with what Lauren said, but you can just kind of ask yourself those questions. Are you before you have something, you know, you take that pause and then decide if you're, um, if you're hungry or if you're acting on an emotion, um, it's halt. So hungry, obviously the H, but then the other ones are an emotion, um, emotion based, and you can kind of go from there. Um, but along with each of those letters, you need to have a plan. So if you are angry, then maybe you need to like do 20 jumping jacks or like something to take that like anger emotion out of you, at least to some extent. I mean, it might not be like the problem solver, um, lonely text someone, call someone, make a plan for like the next day. Um, and if you're tired, just go to bed <laughs> or think of like, maybe I should go to bed earlier. You know, like if it's the morning and you're tired, I should go to bed earlier, you know, kind of plan that way. Um, but you can write on a sticky note, you can put on a um, note card on the fridge or cabinet or whatever. Yeah, that was perfect, Christine. Thank you. I love that acronym. Thanks. And yeah, Blair made a really good point. Sometimes when we're like in the moment, even though we know we should go pause and like do these things, it, we can't, it, we don't do it, right? We're not like thinking clearly like that. Like it's just your go-to, like you may just go like reach for some food. Um, and so Blair made a really good point. She like, she put a post-it note on her screen, right? Cause if she's working and she's on the computer, it's right there to like bring it back. Um, like she has a visual reminder to like bring her back. Um, and it has four specific things she can do on it rather than eat. Right. And sometimes we need that reminder because the reason we do these things is we don't think about it. It just becomes second nature. So I love the visual cues. Um, and it could be on your refrigerator, right? It doesn't have to be like mean words to yourself, It can, but it can just be like, here's what I can do instead. Um, and so you don't have to think about it. They're already there. And then you can just pick one of those things that you need. So I love that. Mm. Oh, that's a hard one, Amanda. So Mindful eating in a child who has allergies and may not always feel satisfied, even if physically full. That's a tough one. Um, and I don't know the extent, like maybe there's a lot of foods they can't eat, but I would probably try to come up with some foods that they know, like really do satisfy them that you can try and have on hand um, that might make them feel that way. I don't know, Maria, Christine, do you have a good idea for that one? That is really um, yeah, just, I would say if there's an activity you can tie to eating, like after they eat, doing something else that satisfies them, like color with them or, you know, play with Play-Doh, like they might like, you know, those poppets, do people know what the poppets are? Like my kids really soothe themselves and find a lot of joy in those like poppets. So it's not food related, but it's something that soothes them. So if you find another activity to couple with mealtime, either before or after that might help. And I would say with any of these questions, uh, Lauren and myself, we're both available for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, Lauren's registered dietitian and then I'm a nutrition coach and personal training and mix, we can mix and match and help too. Or if there was a small group of people that did want to do more work, we could figure something out because it seems like you guys like this, which is good because we like talking about it. 
Uh, Kristen has a question or is chiming in here. Oh, wait, and Mary too. So Mary says, I'll definitely put some post-its up. I grab food when I'm bored. The acronym HALT is good. And that was great. I've never heard that, Christine. And I think that was super helpful. And then Kristen says, what I've been doing lately is just grabbing the dogs and going for a walk. I start out and say 10 minutes and then it ends up being more. And that's great. I love that, Kristen. Thank you for sharing. So we have time for about one more question. And again, as always, I will send a replay of this. We will post it up on the blog. Um, last month didn't make it up on a blog, so it'll be two for one on the blog. Uh, but again, if you have any other specific questions, we can answer some one more now and then you can reach out to us later. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for con continuing to support the Wellness Cafe. We really enjoy being able to be a resource for the team here. So if there's any other questions, oh, Christine's got something. A small amount of a special food to have at the end, maybe Amanda. Oh, that's a good idea. Talk to them about sa saving one bite or having an honest talk about what they might be just about full, but that these few bites will help satisfy them. That's a great idea. Yeah, so. And I'm sure Amanda, you do this. Um but just making sure that they have like enough, like fat and protein and things that will actually help fill them up. Um, and then I would say, like Christine said, even if it's like a special food, that's going to help them. Like sometimes people want to finish their meal with like some dessert, right? Cause it's just like, you just wanted that little like sweet thing to kind of finish off your meal, something that they enjoy like that, that they can have, I would say is absolutely okay. And to really quickly just piggyback on Maria, the pop it thing, you guys, I, my daughters have probably like a hundred poppets, but I'm not kidding you. She brings, um, I think they're great for adults, especially if you find ones that like pop like really well. So I play with them during my daughter's, um, soccer games. Cause I get all like stressed out. So I'll just like pop it. It's just like has two pops, but I think I should probably have it around with me. Like at all times when I'm like going nuts with kids or whatever, <laughs> I'm not kidding you though. They're super helpful. So like some sort of fidget toy that just kind of helps you like, okay, you know, instead of always turning to food. So that was a great idea with the puppets. One more thing I got to say, I'm sorry, I could talk about this all day, <laughs> but also encouraging not just the kids, but yourselves to enjoy and play with your food a bit. I know when you're young, your parents say, don't play with your food, but these are our taco holders. Each person in our family has one. So we do taco bars. So I, you know, do up the ground turkey with the taco mix and then, you know, all the fixings. Each member of our family has one of these and then they get to choose what they put in. You know, we still have some guidelines. They can't do just a straight cheese taco, but um, just making food fun. Like it's meant to be fun. I know there's a lot of baggage. I have baggage from my childhood about food, but if you let yourself enjoy it and all those slides that um, especially that Lauren's slides about, you know, the emotional side of eating, just let yourself have fun. It's food. It should be fun. Right. So yes, on Amazon, these are awesome. And it's so much fun if you do the taco bar with the family. So had to share it felt appropriate. <laughs> no, thank you guys so much for joining Lauren or Christine. Do you have any parting remarks? I don't think so, but thanks for always chiming in. That makes these a lot more fun to have a conversation and see what really kind of stands out to you all. So if you want more of anything, you know, when she sends out the email, you can always reply back. And if there's something that you want us to address, we would be happy to, we just kind of come up with our own ideas, but we'd love to hear from you too. So thank you. Everyone we will be back after the first of the year. So just enjoy your holidays, right? Just kind of plan ahead, enjoy your food. Don't stress celebrate, um, but just try to eat well so that you can have lots of fun. All right. I think that's it. Okay. Happy Friday. We'll see you all next month and in classes. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye Mary. You're welcome. Bye Evelyn, Kathleen, Andy, Mary, and Blair. Bye Maria. <laughs> there you are. Bye, Blair. <laughs> Thanks so much. I'll email you. All right, Lauren. So it recorded on your side. So when you get that, um, send it my way and I'll. Awesome. Oh, yeah, I can stop. All right.